This is Duke University. Living Goods is a social enterprise that supports Avon-like networks of women uh, who go door to door teaching families how to improve their health and wealth and making a living selling a whole range of products that do ju just that. Everything from treatments for malaria and diarrhea to clean cook stoves, water filters, and solar lights. From the beginning, Living Goods has had the ambition, uh, the vision of having impact really at a social scale not just at an organizational scale. Uh, we've never been interested just in building a great organization. We really want to change the game. We want to open access to these essential products and services on a massive scale, on a landscape scale. And that's always had two fundamental implications for us. One, uh, that we have to be financially sustainable. There's simply not enough money from taxpayers or wealthy philanthropists to get the job done. There never has been. Um, and two is, importantly, we're not going to do it alone. Um, and so that ambition around scale means that we have to seek great partners. We have to think about changing how big institutions work in both the public sector and in the private sector. We partner with some of the largest NGOs in the world. We're also very interested in partnering with some of the largest private companies. Um, and in fact, we've had quite a bit of interest, as you might imagine, from the big packaged consumer goods businesses like Nestle, and Unilever, Procter & Gamble. The former head of Procter & Gamble for East Africa is on our board. Um, uh, the uh, board member from Nestle is on our advisory board. Um, and so these companies are looking for ways to continue to grow in the emerging markets. And most of these packaged goods companies, most of their growth is coming in emerging markets. But even there, they're tapping out sort of the middle class opportunity. And they have to figure out how to reach farther down the economic ladder. And that's exactly where a model like this um, is so powerful. And what we're interested in doing is helping them reach new customers, but equally, and maybe more importantly, helping them expand into product areas that have greater impact. Something I would have very seriously considered a few years ago, which is still our objective, is I would have seriously considered starting this as a for-profit rather than a non-profit. Uh, I, I think, you know, we all know about this sort of growing field of impact investing, patient capital, um, program-related investments, all this. And uh, the conclusion I've come to is that philanthropic capital and even impact investing capital, this so-called patient capital, is too patient. And the, I think one of the reasons we don't make more progress in the social sector faster is that the money is not, is not more impatient. And so if I had sort of a rallying cry for people who think about going into this sector or investing in this sector is be more impatient. Um, demand results faster. More nonprofits should go out of business. More nonprofits should merge or, um, or combine. Um, if, the, if, if we were more impatient about results, you'd see a lot more of that. I'm really very bullish about the future. Um, we see a number of trends that are converging and exciting. Um, so at the top of this, of course, is the rise of technology, mobile technology in particular. Um, we see four things colliding right now with, that we think are really going to empower a new age of entrepreneurship, both macro and micro. Um, the increasing access to mobile phones is one. So when we started in, in, in East Africa four years ago, about 30% of our agents have them. Now virtually everyone does. The airtime rates are dropping precipitously. Uh, so all these agents have a much faster and easier way of communicating. Um, their customers can call them any time of day or night. It's much more efficient. Um, a second big trend, of course, is mobile money. Um, and mobile money is, is introduce, introducing all kind of liquidity and speed into transactions. It enables us to transact with our agents remotely. Um, it saves people time. Um, um, now, increasingly, we're finding ways of using mobile to do marketing and not, not just as a passive means of communication. Um, we have um, collected the mobile numbers of every, almost every one of our customers. This enables us and our agents to communicate instantly with all our entire customer base. It used to take us two months to roll out a promotion. We can do it in 20 minutes now. So this, the change in speed is enormous. And then of course you have the rise of microfinance 
um, expanding access to credit to both um, businesses and c consumers. Um, you have the rise of social media and social networks. Um, and then the business model that we're driven by, which is this sort of direct selling Avon model, growing fastest in emerging markets. You put all these four or five things together, you can see how well they mesh and how, f how much they can improve the productivity, the reach, the impact, and the profits of these, of these small entrepreneurs. They really drive out cost. They expand reach just um, manifold uh, ways. And so I think we're just at the very beginning of how these tools are coming together. And I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen.